so here we go episode one first episode after the pilot and uh it's great to be here it it is great to actually be launched and going and be out there and have some feedback and we've appreciated from everybody out there who uh who's taking the time to listen and and uh, view our stuff and kind enough to comment so welcome to after the whistle episode one i guess good morning riv how was everything going today good morning and you know what it's so uh, such a such a ta- like a lob up you know what it, it's with, hey how's it going today <laughs> are you done now i am yeah oh there we go what a morning why is that yeah you know what i mean uh, i actually kind of feel like uh pre-game jitters i i feel like like um uh, you know i don't even know anxiety is the right word but i feel pumped up i feel excited it it's been uh, it's felt like it's been a long time a long time coming it's been exciting we've put in a lot of work to kind of get to where we are right now and uh just excited to actually sit down and and talk some hockey again is talk eager a good word are you eager yes yes very much so not anxious not, not anxious no not anxious, not anxious. I, I, not, eager i guess might be the best word we, we could use you know you know it's it's interesting too because um I've talked to so many people over the last month, month and a half, and there's so many people that uh, whether whether they're my friends, close friends, they're they're waiting, they're asking a lot of questions. Uh, you know, are you guys going to be doing a podcast? Are you guys going to do something else? Yes, we are, and just wait, be patient. We'll be back out there. And and there's been a lot of um, positive. Uh, you know, communication with so many people, whether it's, whether it's, uh, you know, at a grocery store, like I said, uh, me talking the other day uh, at a car dealership with, uh, with, a with, a with an older man. And, um, it's, it's been awesome. The feedback's been awesome. And now I'm just happy to get back and do what we love to do. And I love to do this. I love to talk hockey. I love to talk, uh, these, these subjects, uh, that's, that's coming out. And, you know, it's just feel, I feel like it's just a, oh, it's a weight off our shoulders right now. Now we can just do what we do. You know, kind of a last second entry here. Uh, you know, a guy that I think we wanted to fall back on a little bit uh, and use because he's so much fun, but also to talk a little bit of football too, because we, you know, we're pro athletes, former pro athletes, but you know, we, we talked all sports in the locker room all yeah. the time. And Ruben Brown's going to join us uh, today. Talk and if the Bills had won that game, we probably wouldn't be getting Ruben. No offense, Ruben, but he won't hear about this till after when he listens, if he listens. But we're gonna get Ruben on because he would have been right on the line. <clears throat> yeah. He was a he's an O lineman, <clears throat> so that's his play. That's his bread and butter. We'll find out if they executed it right. Is that the right play to go for? What would he have done? What's he up to? Uh, you know what a character he is. So he's gonna join us today too. So so for episode one, it, it's it's a pretty full show. It's a pretty full show, and I'm excited about it. But the biggest question in hockey would be the Buffalo Sabres, the hottest team in the league. But we wake up this morning talking about a former Buffalo Sabre and more trials and tribulations of Evander Kane. He can't seem to get away from it. I don't know what to say. I, I read this, and I was just like, you know, I don't care if you're – pro-vax, anti-vax, uh, to me, it, it doesn't matter. I don't judge to each their own. I, re- I really feel that way. You know, I really do feel that way. Yeah. But just be upfront about it. You can't this – is, this is beyond the league. This is falsifying a, 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 a government document. I mean – I don't know if there's there if this goes beyond the league, but I mean, like it just seems like everywhere we turn. And I am a guy for second chances. Hell, I'll I'll even I'll even go as far and say I I believe in third chances for some people. I mean, myself included. I mean, I've I've been given chances in my life, but how many times do you turn around and just keep making a big mistake, like a big mistake? We're not yeah, talking little I mean, mistakes. This isn't a curfew violation. We're talking about a, a major mistake here. And he's, and he's paying for it. 21 games. 21 games. On top of those 21 games, he's had a really, really tough year, year and a half. 
you know, with the, the gambling allegations, you know, he's dealing with issues with his, with his uh, wife right now. Um, it, it, it seems like this young man is really, really not in a great spot in life. He's still trying to figure some things out. Hopefully he can find the right direction. Um, but it just seems like it's, it, there's, there's more bad that comes along with every decision that this young man makes. And, uh, you know, this is, this not isn't a bad decision though. This is, this is stupidity. This is a gamble. I mean, he's a gambler. I mean, this is a risk. So, I mean, like he took a serious risk here when you go and do something like this. I mean, this yeah. is as uh, devious as it gets. You know, like, you think he's the only guy in the league that has done this? It's a great question. It's a great question. Uh, I'm going to say no. I'm going, well, I don't, I, I, you know what? It's funny. I, I can't even answer that because I've never been asked that before. I didn't even think that when he, when he said that, but by the tone of your voice, you don't seem to think so. Oh, not at all. I, I can't guarantee anything, but I would think that, uh, there's, uh, there's players in the National Hockey League that have done the same thing. There's people that don't want to get the vaccine. They choose not to get the vaccine. But when you're forced to get the vaccine, you're going to get it because then, you know, if, if you don't, then you're not going to get paid. So, you know, they're, they're, these players are in a very tough situation, some of them. Some of them, it's just right. The majority of them... Uh, they want the vaccine. They feel comfortable with the vaccine and that's great. But there's some players that I don't think um, want to for whatever reason they're choosing. Well, and if they don't, if they don't get it, they don't get paid like millions of dollars. You've been training your entire lives to get to this point. And now all of a sudden you're forced to take something. And, and if you don't, then you don't get paid. I would imagine some of those players are going to try and find a way around it. And one just got caught. I don't even know if I want to ask my next question. I don't know if I even want to ask it, to be honest with you. Go ahead. Fire away. Well, no, it's just, it's like, do you blame? I don't, I mean, I don't blame, I understand to prevent the spread of, of COVID, but I don't blame pro athletes for not wanting to get the vaccination. I mean, when you, when you look and read about the people that have been affected by COVID, it does not, pro athletes do not fall into the demographic of risk of dying from COVID, right? So, I mean, they're all probably like, I don't want to put something in my body that could harm, potentially harm my performance because they just don't know. It's not a flu shot. I know everyone wants to say it's, you know, would you get the flu shot, whatever. But I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm no doctor. I don't think it's like the flu shot, but I, I think because it's so new and so, you know, unknown that pro athletes are very nervous about what they're going to put in their body. I really believe that unless they're, unless they're doing PEDs, which, you know, I mean, they know they're, that's helping them. So, I mean, yeah, like, and I got to throw that in there because a year, I watch, I watch all these sports and you're not going to tell me that, that all athletes are clean of PEDs, but, but that's not the conversation we're having here. So I can understand why there are guys against the vaccination. Um, I just never would have thought that any player would have gone to the to the length to falsify the document. I just because getting caught is so stupid. So just I mean that's I just never and I also would have thought that there was some kind of a of a you could trace. You know, you'd be able to trace if these players got it done. So I just no, to answer your question, I never thought that that a player would falsify a uh, a vaccination document. No. I just it'd be interesting to know how how it actually happened, how he actually got caught. It's interesting because I'm going to tell you, I don't think that uh, he's the only player in the National Hockey League right now that is in the same situation. 
Now, I'm not accusing any one of these guys. I'm just saying I would, wouldn't be surprised if there's well, other players in the National Hockey League. With the amount of money these guys are making, them. how could, why, you don't think they could buy a fake, uh, a fake vaccination card? Yes. But that's not the thing. It's not, it's not about that. It's just about uh, the, the, the tough situation that this young man has been in for, it seems like, so long, his entire career. Like, I, I mean, you can, you can even spin this back to, you know, our, our time here in, in Buffalo, and, and we're rebuilding. We have a newly drafted second overall draft pick, Jack Eichel. Franchise player, okay? The year before, we draft a Sam Reinhardt, who is second overall, a very, very high-end prospect. What does the GM go and do? He goes and picks up Evander Kane. Trades away Tyler Myers, a first-rounder. Trades away Joel Armia, a first-rounder. Trades away uh, Brendan Lemieux, who is our second-rounder. And throws into the deal an extra first round draft pick. And we pick up a Vander Kane and Zach Bogosian. A Vander Kane, a week before, or two weeks before he got traded to Buffalo, was not in good graces with his Vancouver Canuck or um, Winnipeg Jet teammates. He refused to follow the rules in Winnipeg on a dress code. So what happens? Zach Bogosian, Andrew Ladd, all of the veteran players on that team went and took his clothes because you're supposed to be wearing a suit. There is yeah, a, he was on, they were on a, they were a, on a road trip in Vancouver and I think he's from Vancouver and he, he, I think he showed up the next day or something in the clothes that he, he, no, no, he was wearing a, he was wearing a track suit suit. He was wearing what he thought was a suit, but it was made out of like material, like a track suit. Okay. All right. So like go on with the story. So yeah. So, so, yeah, so we, we all know that, the story. We all know the story. And they, yeah, they tossed it refu- in the show. He refused to listen to anybody. And I think the, the veteran leadership group, the core went and took his clothes and threw him in the shower. So you're not going to, you're not going to be that guy here. And he was traded from that team a week later. And we bring him here. Think about it. You have one bad apple. It can really, really hurt. You have our younger players looking at Evander Kane, who is what, a, a fifth overall draft pick. You know, he's, he's scored 30 goals in the league already. He was a young guy. He's making $5 million a year. And our younger players like Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhart are watching this guy. Watching him not only on the ice, because on the ice, he was a pretty solid hockey player. Off the ice, he's a train wreck. He's a wild stallion. He doesn't listen to anybody. He's not a team guy. He's, 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 he's a bad apple. And we, we're bringing him here to surround Jack Eichel and Sam Reinhardt, our, our two franchise players. That's what you want around our players? Give your head a shake. It's absolutely ridiculous. This guy is going on the road. They go on a road trip. He's flying his Lamborghini in for two days. Who does that? Who does that? Who flies a car that's going to cost five grand to fly it across the country for, so he can drive it for two days in LA? Give your head a shake. This is what our young guys got surrounded by. And how's that going in San Jose now? Not much better. Not much, not much to add there. Have you ever seen the, uh, you have Netflix, right? Yes. Have you seen any of these episodes uh, or the show series called Bad Sport? No. Unbelievable stories. Unbelievable. One is about uh, LSU college basketball team uh, that point shaved, didn't throw games, but point shaved. Yeah. Um, 
and they got caught. There's another one about uh, figure skating, the, the 2002 Olympics, where the Russian judge was uh, influenced to yes, alter scores. I remember scores. that. Okay. Uh, there was another one about a cricket, uh, a famous cricketer out of South Africa, where cricket over there is, is like NFL football over here. And like the greatest player ever was, again, fixing scores. Um, so there are all these episodes about, you know, it's called bad sport. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's a great name for it. You know what I mean? And, and I feel like this guy's a, an episode of this. I feel like Evander Kane's career and, 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 and sideshow is, is an episode of this because look, I, I don't, I don't want to go out and, 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 and make assumptions or whatever, but I mean, this guy, it's, he seems troubled to me. He seems troubled what? to me. You think? Yeah. Well, but like beyond just what like, he's troubled. Well, beyond he's just beyond, no, beyond financial. Okay. I'm well, talking all, like, I'm talking beyond together. Well, I, I, I understand, I, I understand that, but five. is anyone, is anyone, is anybody talking about that? Cause we're just, we're just beating this guy down. We're just beating him down, and I get it. I get it because we all want the big athlete making millions of dollars uh, to be to be a scapegoat. We all want that, but are we are we actually talking about his his mental well being? Um, where is his head at? Where, where is his where is his head been at since he's a young kid? Is he traumatized from something that nobody knows about? Maybe even that his parents don't know about. I mean, do we know any of this? I I, I certainly don't. But I got to tell you, I mean, you know, all signs kind of point to yes. And again, I'm no doctor. I'm no psychiatrist. I need to make sure that I, I say that out loud. But, but I mean, we just, we want to sit here and beat this guy down. And he deserves some of it. He does. He deserves some of it. But where is the help for him? Is there help? Has someone tried to help? I mean, you can send a guy to to uh, you can send a guy to rehab for gambling or sex addiction or alcohol, but maybe it's beyond that. Maybe it's beyond that, and maybe I'm saying this. Maybe I'm speaking from experience. I, I don't tell you the only the only way that you're going to fix this unless you hit rock bottom. Well, he's he got to hit rock bottom. Not even close to rock bottom. Well, I don't think he's accepted that he's hit rock bottom. Absolutely. I think he's that's not even part of the problem. Like yes. you have to you have to accept that you've hit rock bottom in your life. And in rock bottom, do you think bottom, he accepts it? Do you think that he feels that he's in a bad spot? In well, life? I hit rock bottom in the middle of my career, but I wouldn't allow it to ever be accepted or or known or shown or I didn't I waited till after because I didn't want to crumble in front of all my all my, you know, teammates and people around me that, you, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's not an ego thing. It's, um, it's a vulnerability thing and it's a pride. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to go as far as say, you know, masculinity. Cause it's not, that. there's a stigma it's, it's around it, right? There's a you're, stigma you're gonna around be deemed, it. You're going to be deemed weak or something or stupid and or, or, Weak, yeah. I mean, what? What? Tell me one thing, Craig. Tell me one thing. A pro athlete of any sport never wants to be called weak. Weak. Yeah. You call a guy weak physically, he's going to be pissed off because all pro athletes think they're the strongest in the world. Even the even the draft picks that can't do chin ups, like you know, call a guy mentally weak, he's going to be really pissed off because you know how mentally friggin' hard it is to get to that level. So you're not weak. You might not be as strong as others. You might be a little fragile in some areas. Then there are guys that aren't, but you never want to be called weak because you never want to show that you're fragile. And Evander Kane doesn't strike me as the type of guy who wants to show weakness, vulnerability, yeah. Um, you know, admit mistakes, probably doesn't want to admit that he makes mistakes. Like what's the hardest thing to do in life? Admits that you made a mistake, especially when you have an ego and we all have egos. Some have a bit more than others. 
and some show their egos more than others. And we're talking about a guy who I think everybody knows has an ego. So it's much deeper than just falsifying a vaccination card, gambling on some sports games, you know, drinking, you know, partying, misbehaving in, in whatever way that you do. The layers of the onion are, and I'm just, you know what, man, like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm, I mean, think I'm about, think about, what, think here. about when he was here in Buffalo. I know. Again, I, 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 I bring everything back to when this team was building, building and starting from scratch. You can call it a, you know, the rebuild and the tanking years and this and that, but we ended up getting Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhardt, two pretty darn good hockey players. And we go and surround him by a guy that flies a helicopter from Toronto to Buffalo and misses practice. You remember that one? Like I, I do. Went to I think he went to the uh, I don't know where he went. The Raptors game. No, I think it was uh, the NBA All Star game or, or something. The NBA, yeah, the NBA All Star game. Because I think the season started late that year. Remember, it was a lockout yeah. year. I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to tie the pieces together. But I feel like the NBA All Star game that year was in Toronto, or maybe he went to that too. But in training camp, he and uh, I think he took Jamie McGinn with him. I'm not mistaken, but anyway, you know, what's an interesting, uh, question, you know, Evander Kane last year in 56 games had 22 goals and 49 points. It's a fantastic year. This is a, I never, not one single time when he was here in Buffalo, did I say that he's overpaid or he's not doing his job he was the one guy each and every night that I thought played with jam. He was, you know, he was on the power play. He was physical. He would stick up for his teammates. He did a great job on the ice. He's a great, great hockey player. But my question is this. He's had issues in every city he's been in. He's got, he is, he's now bankrupt and owes many, many different places money that will be paid out over time. You have allegations, you know, issues with his wife in this, in, on social media. These two are arguing on social media. You have, you know, uh, you know, gambling allegations. Now you have, now he's, he's put himself even further behind with, you know, forging a vaccination uh, card. At what point does the San Jose sharks cut bait? At what point do they just have to say, you know, listen, I mean, we well, how about have- the league? How about the league? Like what about the league? The league, the league suspended for twenty one games. Uh, well, right? I know 20, 21 games. I mean, what, like at some point, at what point in time does the San Jose Sharks want to move on from this player? Even though he's 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 been really really a great player in the last few years, he's actually played exceptionally well. His last three years are seventy five games played, thirty goals, fifty six points. Two years ago, 64 games, 26 goals, 47 points. And then last year, 56 games, 22 goals, 49 points. He has been an exceptionally good player. But at what point in time does an organization just say, can't deal with this anymore? There's too much of a black cloud that's following this player around, and we don't know what's around the corner. Do you, I, I hate to put this much – Well, and. I hate to put this much uh, blame on one player, but do you think it's hard to say one, but do you think he's the main reason why the Sabres kind of went south? No, I think he, I think, I think in back when he was gave up a lot to get him, gave up a lot to get him and Bogosian. Gave up Tyler Myers, who is a 12th overall draft pick, who was a six foot seven defenseman who was, you know, Mid 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 range age wise, which I think he could have been extremely useful moving forward. But anyway, Tyler Myers, Joel Armia was our first round draft pick, who's now having a pretty nice career 
in, in, in um, Montreal. You have Brennan Lemieux, who's kind of not really solidified a spot in the National Hockey League. And, a, and another first round draft pick that we gave. We gave up a lot, but it's not about what we're giving up. It's about what you're receiving. It's about what you're trying to build as a, as a franchise, a, as a team that is trying to surround the players, these young stars, the Sam Reinhardts and the Jack Eichels. You're trying to surround those players with veteran leadership that can show the way and teach these young, these young men how to be good people, not only on the ice, but off the ice is even more important, especially in today's, in today's game where these younger players are not making, you know, $600,000 anymore. They're making, you know, three years into their deal, they go and sign for 80 million or 60 million or 50 million. The, the money that's being paid to these younger players is, is extreme. I loved the deal. But you need to surround those young players with the proper players. I said it when it happened, and I'll stand by it today. I think, uh, you know, it's easy after the fact to sit and, and pinpoint mistakes and say if this guy's the right guy or the wrong guy for the job. You know, clearly Tim Murray, you know, didn't set a great culture in this organization at all, you know, when you talk about leadership from the top down. But – his vision for building a team, I could appreciate. And, you know, he, when he made that deal, I loved it. I loved the intent of it. You know, he's trying to take a kid in a bad situation in, in uh, Winnipeg where he started in Atlanta with all the pressure of the world as an 18-year-old, you know, in a terrible organization. They move, you know, and he goes to Winnipeg. And then, you know, when you suck in Winnipeg, who really wants to play in Winnipeg? And you know, and then, you know, he, he, he had, you know, and then he's himself, but, you know, he gets that second chance to come to Buffalo and it, it doesn't really change. So, you know, when the deal happened and you look at, you know, what he's trying to do, you get rid of Myers, you get rid of all those other young pieces that you have no idea what they're going to be. I loved the deal. But Gojin was injured all the time and he needed a fresh start. And I loved him as an 18-year-old when he stepped in the league. I loved him. First game, he fought for sheer as an 18-year-old. And I loved him ever since because of the, the balls it took to do that. But, yeah. but um, you know, I, I, I did like what he represented as a player. And when he got to Tampa, he was able to be used as the proper player. And he found success there. So I liked the deal because of, of the direction of the team and the intent that there was behind it, because now you're starting to build with veteran pieces, high draft picks, you know, it, it didn't work out. Clearly it didn't work out. They were, they were the wrong pieces. You know, Bogosian just got hurt here a lot, but, but I mean, I thought he was all right, but they were the wrong pieces. I got hurt, but he came from Winnipeg and he was hurt the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's all I wanted to say about that. I just, I, I could defend that trade when the trade was made and I'm not going to sit here and say, I never would have made that deal. Like a lot of people do when they're like, Oh, I never would have made that deal because they say it, you know, six years later, but I stand by the, by it at the time. I liked the deal at the time. Um, speaking of deals, buddy, speaking of deals, a lot of people out there think the Jack Eichel is getting a raw deal. A lot of people out there think that uh, Jack Eichel should be allowed to have whatever procedure done on his neck that he feels he wants because it's his body. And Robin Leonard comes out, is very vocal about the Jack Eichel situation, very vocal about the, the medical treatment in Buffalo or his in particular, and very vocal about Jack Eichel's. Uh, we'll talk about all the trade speculation and all that, but I think all of that is directly related to the neck and the procedure and a lot of chaos around this, to be quite honest with you. And do you I just believe don't... that uh, Jack Eichel should uh, have free reign on what, uh, what he wants to do with his own body? If the Buffalo Sabres... did not have the wording in the CBA standing behind them, 
then I would sit here and I would say, it is absolute bullshit the way that they're treating this guy. Okay, well, guess what? But guess what? They do have the wording. Exactly. Okay, And, and, and I Jack wouldn't Michael, play it Jack any Michael other differently. Every player in the National Hockey League agreed to that writing. That's right. So do you think that Jack Eichel is – that he believe? do you think that he should be able to do what he wants with his own body? No. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know what else to say. I feel terrible for the kid that he's in this position. I do. I feel terrible for the team that they're in this position. I feel terrible for the team that has to take a risk and trade for him in this position. Um, I feel if terrible. You were Jack Eichel, what would you do? Other than be completely losing my shit right now because Olympics are out the window. And most of the season is out the window any which way you spin it. Um, and, he, I mean, you want to – I mean, you know, he holds some blame here too. But if I were Jack – if I were Jack, I would, I would roll the dice. And I would say, I strongly believe in this procedure. I'm going to prove you all wrong. I'm going to get the procedure done. I'll sign a waiver. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rehab on my own. I'm going to come back to play. So you're, you're willing to give up $50 million. Well, you've, you're willing to create this situation because you're going to go against something that is in writing, that is legally binded, but you're going to go through this. I mean, I don't yeah. blame him. I, I wouldn't want a fusion. I'm 41. I don't want a fusion now. I could not imagine being told I need, need a fusion at 25 as a star player in the National Hockey League. Could yeah. not imagine. I like, that's a scary procedure. When you're dealing with the neck, it's a scary procedure regardless. Yep. But, yep. but I certainly understand why he's holding his ground. Fusions, they're no joke. Fusions are no joke. I mean, so that's where I stand on it. It is well, the, the, other ugliest, it's the ugliest The other procedure is no seen. joke either because it's never been, it's never been done you're, on an NHL player. Right. I think they're both extremely, extremely risky. And I, and I do – look, I, I, I don't hope this. I do feel this. I think Jack Eichel is going to be a star player whose career is cut very short due to injury, even after the neck is fixed. I think it's going to be a reoccurring thing with him. I don't want this to be true. Mark the date on your calendar that I hope I'm proven wrong here. I'm, I'm scared for the kid. Am I, like, am I actually scared? No, but I'm, I'm nervous for him. I could not imagine being him and, and being a, a, a player of that magnitude going through this. It's, it's tough for both sides, though, right? You know, it, it, it really is tough for both sides. I don't think the Sabres want him to have a surgery, period. I think the Sabres would like to sit back and wait for someone to trade for Jack and get as much worth that they can for the player. What I don't worth? think they want like that, Jack. Like, go ahead. I go ahead. I've done a lot of talking. Go ahead. Listen, you, you I, think I, I that Jack what? Listen, if I'm Jack Eichel, I would not have. I would not do a fusion. I would hold out and I would wait. He's only 25 years old. You're you're not going to be told what you're going to do with your own body. No one's going to tell you what you have to do with your own body. This is your body. This is your career. If you don't like the surgery that they're telling you, then I wouldn't have a surgery if, if, if it didn't seem right. And I have, you know, a medical staff on, on the other side saying, no, 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 Jack, this is the surgery that you need. You need to stick to this. If someone else is telling you that has the power, you have to do this. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing that. I would want to do something that made, made sense to me personally and I would, I would wait until that surgery can be had. So the Sabres are in a tough situation because they want to move Jack on, having a hard time moving him because he needs a surgery, okay? And, you know, the, the, the solution for this, I hope, is right around the corner. And the solution is there's another team now has the ability to look at Jack's medical records 
they have the ability to talk to doctors, their doctors, other doctors, the doctors that could uh, um, do the procedure. And if they feel comfortable with it, now all of a sudden you're dealing with something. Now why, you have traction. Why now? Why, why now is all, are all the medical records allowed to be shown and everything? I, I don't understand this. Like, why, why now? Why, wasn't it, why weren't they shown in May, June? When was the postseason uh, press conference? Their, their season ended in May? May. He got hurt in March, March 7th. I know that for a fact. Yeah. So May. Okay, so why now are they starting to show? Why, why wouldn't they have done this back in the summer? I say they. I mean, whoever's side. I don't, I don't know. I mean, why is this starting to move along? Is, this, is Pat Brisson the reason that this is uh, moving along so quickly? I, I can't figure you know, out why now all is of a sudden key, right? you can trade Jack Eichel with the same condition he was in back in May, June, July, August, September, and now all of a sudden you'll, you're going to be able to move him. I heard conditional uh, you know, pieces are going to be involved. I mean, this, this deal is going to be a mess. What does that mean? Exactly. What does that mean? Condition, conditional pieces. Based on health. Based on, based it, on it, yeah. Like, what does that mean? Sabres are going to get screwed here. You know this. I don't think they're going to get screwed because okay. I think Jack will be traded. I think he will have the procedure. For what? Of his choice. I think he will return healthy. And I think he's going to play a long, uh, long career. That's what I believe. Medical advances right now in, in sports, uh, you know, surgeries, it's, they're incredible. These doctors are geniuses. And I believe that uh, Jack Eichel will get the surgery. He will come back and he will be healthy. Where does he have the surgery? Does he have the surgery as a Sabre or as a... No, he will, be, he will be a member of another team. That's this what season? I you think this season or after yes. this season? Yeah. No, I think it's going to happen this season. What an absolute like you, shame. You have to understand that the procedure that Jack wants, it's, you're looking at three months and he's, he's back and able to play. You're looking at six weeks... Once he has the surgery, you're looking at six weeks. Jack can probably start to, to, to do more things and, and, and become more active, can get back on the ice, he can start training, strengthening the whole shoot and match, and then you're looking at uh, three months in, he's, he's ready to play. And I think that Jack will be ready to play. Such it's, a been a long, it's been a long process. It's been a long, uh, hard process for the Sabres. And for Jack Eichel, I'm sure that we, we know, like, listen, I mean, when you're injured, it's a tough time. It's a really, really tough time. Jack Eichel is, and he is an incredible, incredible player. And he does not want to be in this situation. He just wants clarity. He just wants to move on. Um, and, and, and the Sabres feel the exact same way. They just want to move on. Look at, look at how the team's doing now. No Sam Reinhart, no Jack Eichel, no Rasmus Ristolainen. Who would ever thought that the Sabres would be 2-0 and to start the season? Do I think it's going to last? Hell no. I don't well, think it's going to last. But I'm going to tell you right now, it, it's, it's, it's fun watching the underdog play well and, and do, do the right things to win hockey games. It's exciting. I'm happy for them. They're building something right now from scratch. They're building from scratch. And you know what's even more exciting is when you watch these young players that all, all seem like they're having fun. There's no, there's no heavy black cloud that's, that's hanging over their heads anymore. Okay, These players are happy to be here. The environment coming to the rink is exciting. The coaching staff with Don Granato and Matt Ellis and, and, and the other coaches, these, these young players are happy to be there. They're happy to have the opportunity to play and build something here. This is the environment that Kevin Adams wants. And guess what? Just around the corner, our players like Owen Power, 
There's le- players like Eric Portillo. There's players like Jack Quinn in the minors right now. There's players like J.J. Paterka. There's Matias Samuelson. These are all extremely high draft picks. Second, first and second round draft picks. That are marinating. Pekalukinen. They're marinating. Marinating. And they years ago, a few years anything. ago, all these guys would have been in the league, in the league by now because you needed them in the wrong yeah. roster. Explain to me why J.J. Paterka is not playing in the National Hockey League right now. Arguably one of the best players at training camp. Why is he in the minors? Do you want me to answer that, or do you just want to go ahead and answer your own rhetorical question? It's up to you. Want me to take it? Yeah, go ahead. Take your own question. Interview yourself. Because Kevin Adams knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Kevin Adams knows what he's doing. He has a he has a young player that just came over from Germany. This is a player that they traded up for, that they felt extremely confident and comfortable with by trading up to get this player. J.J. Paterka comes over here after playing a few years in the German Elite League and played extremely well against men. He came over to training camp. He's impressed from day one. He's impressed through training camp. He, he impressed through the preseason games. And how he played in those games, there's absolutely no question that he should be playing in the National Hockey League. But guess what? What? Kevin Adams and his staff know how to develop and not give the cookie to these young players. They have to go and earn it. Be in all situations, continue to play, continue to marinate, develop, whatever, however you want to call it. Do you not think that Matias Samuelson right now could be playing in the National Hockey League? He's 6'5, he's 230 pounds, he skates well, he passes well, he's a great defender. Do you not think he could play in the National Hockey League? No. He can play here. There's no question about it. But they are putting him in the minors right now to allow him to build the hunger to want to be here. And not only when he comes up, he's not just going to be a player. He's going to be an impact player. So, And they have other players that are doing the same thing. Jack Quinn, J.J. Paterka, Luka Pekalukanen, Matias Samuelson. These players right now are in the minors and they're gonna, they're being told you have to earn the opportunity to play up. I know I know the Sabers are are you know catching everybody's eye and everyone's like look the red hot Sabers top of the league Sabers two and zero. But I mean I think because of, and people are surprised because they they have them pegged to finish at the bottom. You do I do everybody does and I think players know that. Yeah. But you know their their schedule to start the season. It's pretty favorable for a team like them. Uh, you know, Montreal going into this with the Carey Price thing and everything. I mean, yeah. you know, they've, they've, they've kind of – they've gone through some turmoil. I, they lost the night before they, uh, to the Leafs uh, they, the night before they came here. Didn't they lose that game? I think they lost the night before. Well, they played the night before anyway. Montreal? Yeah, they lost, Wait, the, no. yes. they lost the Leafs the night before, 2-1. to one. Um. Yeah. So anyway, then they roll into Buffalo. So the Sabres got them on a back-to-back. Arizona is not really going to be known for being a really good team this year. And Vancouver, I think, is a massive question mark. So, I mean, I didn't think they were going to start the season 0-3. I didn't think they were going to not – I didn't think they were going to, to not win a game. Their test comes game four, game six, you know, when you see a real team like Boston. Then you have New Jersey – but then you have the Tampa Bay Lightning, you know, and that's when that's when you're really going to see what the separation looks like. In my opinion, we're going to be able to me- have a measuring stick, if you will, from a cup contender to building a team that's building. And that's basically the way I saw their their schedule when the season started. Very much so. I I. I said uh i said a couple uh said a week ago we were talking about the sabers and i'm like you know what they're young 
um, and they're going to stink. And still think they're going to stink. I, I just think they're 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 starting fresh. They have a lot of really exciting young players, um, you know, and they just don't they don't have the depth. They don't have the depth um, to be able to win on a nightly basis. But what I've seen in the first two games, it certainly gives uh, you know a little bit of a chuckle uh, at the end of the games. And uh, you know, I'm just like, good for you guys. Good for you guys. I'm happy for them. You know why? Because there hasn't been a lot of winning in this, well, must in have this been. organization for a long time. And I'm happy that these young guys, these fresh, happy young men that want to play in Buffalo, that they're enjoying Buffalo. Buffalo is an unbelievable hockey city. I it know. Is and they didn't get a chance to feel that in the home opener. I mean, I've, I've, I'm not, I know you don't like when I bring up the good years, but I've been in that rink when it's packed for the home opener and people are actually excited about the season. Yeah. They're, they're even, they're roaring for even Andrew Peters to come out of the tunnel, let alone a Vanek and a Briere oh. and a Drury. I mean, it's, you know, and a Miller, Ryan Miller. I, just, I hated playing here. I hated I playing here. I, I right. don't know how many times I've said that. I think I've said it to you so many times that you're rolling your eyes, but. Well, you have. And I, I just, one I just, city. This, this was I, one city. In all of the years that I played in the National Hockey League, you know, Buffalo Sabres and the Montreal Canadiens were in the same division. And I played here so many times. It's one of the worst buildings I played in, I, in I all know. the years. And, and you say that, I just, I just want to finish my point there. I, I felt like, did I actually, was I sitting on the sofa? I watched the first game with my brother at his house. And I, I watched the first game and I even tweeted out, I said over under on the attendance of the game. And I, you know, I, I, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed for the team. I was embarrassed for the league because Buffalo is a great market. I was embarrassed for the fans, not of the fans, but for the fans that they actually didn't want to go. Like they didn't want to go. And like, would you want to go? So, but that's just so not Buffalo and it's not the fans fault. No, I don't blame them, Craig. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's not Buffalo. And that's when you know things are bad. That's when you know things on the ice and in the organization have been bad because they're not there. And they, because they love their hockey. Go look at the ratings of the playoffs in the Buffalo market against the Pittsburghs and the Chicago's and all the teams that actually have teams in the playoffs and Buffalo hasn't been in the playoffs. Go look at the ratings. They don't lie. Buffalo's in the top five, six, even when their team's not in the playoffs to watch the playoffs, you know? So when I watch usually number one, it would be number one. And, and I see that that night and I, and I, I just, I feel bad for, for a lot of people. I feel bad for the ownership because that's not what they want. I feel bad for, for the fans because I know, I know, and then I'm not trying to kiss the fans' ass. I just experienced the fans here in Buffalo when they're tailgating in the, during the playoffs before a playoff game. Like, yeah. Like, I, 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 I well, listen, I mean, uh, well, there, has there been mistakes? Well, hold on, but hold on. Yeah, but I hurt for the players. Like, like, how do you, I thought I was so impressed. You hurt for the players. I was I so impressed that they, that they, that they took that negative that they could have been like, this is embarrassing. Like, Oh my God, there's nobody here. Oh my God. And turned it into a real positive and put on an unbelievable home opener show for that, uh, for those fans that showed up and, but I don't know where it goes from there. But I just, I don't know, man. I just, that was a, that was a real, that was a real low for Sabre hockey because even over the years, fans have been there for the opener. And speaking of being there, we thank you all for being here with us and riding along with us for episode one. And uh, trust me when I say there's a lot more to come in episode two as we will speak to uh, our good friend Jeremy Roenick talk a little more about Jack Eichel, all other things going on around the league with one of the most polarizing figures in the game, Jeremy Roenick. Also a nice stop by visit to talk a little football with our friend Ruben Brown. Be sure to follow us on all our platforms, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere else where you get your podcasts. 
This is After the Whistle. We are out.